Hi, I'm Firefighter Ray. And this week on Firehouse Kitchen, we're gonna be cooking in my firehouse, the Bayport Fire Department. We're gonna be cooking with my father-in-law, Anthony, who's been helping us on the show, being our prep cook. And I promised him an episode, and this is it. So get ready, and let's do some cooking with Anthony Sino on Firehouse Kitchen. Hello, and welcome to Firehouse Kitchen. We have got a very special episode for you today. I have my father-in-law, Anthony, with us. How you doing, Anthony? I'm doing great, son. Thank love you for you. coming on. Love, love you too. Um, what are we gonna be making today? We're gonna be making a stuffed flounder. Very, very simple. Uh, most of these uh, ingredients you have in the house, uh, we're gonna go right at it, and it's uh, pretty easy to do. So uh, now you've been, we you've begin. been prepping on stuff. Yeah, I, be, I prepped on the last show of I House Kitchen uh, behind the scenes, and I always wanted to jump in. And uh, my roots go back to Brooklyn, where my parents always uh, cooked in the kitchen. Hardly any uh, ingredients needed a certain amount. They just went with love. We're gonna take some basic breadcrumbs. Again, all the amounts are in the, will be in the um, now, are these four seasoned website. breadcrumbs? Are these, uh, this is just Italian breadcrumbs, seasoned breadcrumbs, usually Italian. You can add a little bit to it if you want. Uh, we're gonna put a little bit in here. I'm just gonna put a little bit more. It's about a cup and a half, two cups. Um, we're going to add some oil just okay. to sort of wet it. And uh, don't worry about how much oil is going in there. First of all, it's olive oil. Doesn't have to be virgin olive oil. Any kind of olive oil would do. Uh, we just want to sort of give it a nice consistency. You just move it around a bit. Okay. As we do this, you're going to see you'll need a little bit more. And probably, want to make again, like a paste? we want to make sort of a paste so that this is yeah. basically is going to be just our ingredients for the stuffing. Uh, let's see a little bit more. But if you put a little bit more in here, hang on. Okay. Now, we're going to continue to mix this, obviously. All right. And we're going to start to roll our flounder. So, I'm just going to take a scoop. I'm going to put it on here. I have a bleached rag, by the way, sanitary rag, so we're going to clean our hands after we work with the fish. As you see, I'm not really putting a lot, almost like spreading, almost like spreading toast on jam. Mm -hmm. Well, I should say jam on toast, excuse me. We're gonna roll this up, very, very simple. Okay. Now I'm gonna take this plate, this dish right here, our baking dish. All right, we're gonna put a little bit of olive oil in this baking dish, just to coat the bottom so the fish doesn't stick. Right. And uh, My eggs always stick whenever I cook once, them. Oil. Once again, you know how you make eggs. I mean, eggs is no big deal, obviously, to keep it from sticking. I always use a little bit of Pam, cholesterol free, hot, healthy. I like to cook uh, right in the bacon grease. What's, what, what's, what's, what, what's really funny is that my, grand, my grandparents, my parents, growing up, uh, when they cooked, uh, again, everything was fresh. It was a whole different culture then. Uh, everything, uh, literally, the, the uh, potter's man would come down, I'm dating myself, come down the street in a horse and wagon, you'd run out and you'd get fresh escarole, fresh spinach. Everything was just, just beautiful. Peas, you actually took them out of the pod, you cooked them yourself. So that was the good old days. Now everything is quick, everybody's working, everybody's iPad, iPod, iPhone. So we have to try to do things simple. Didn't you grill pesto on your, uh, on the fire escape? Yeah, we had a fire escape. We also had a cold water flat where there was no heat in my house. We had one little stove that heated one room. Those were the days. Here I go dating myself. I'm not as old as I look. Anyway, back to what we were doing. We're gonna take a second one. And we're gonna do the same thing. But before we do the second one, we're gonna take this one that we rolled and we're gonna place it in the dish ever so gently. All right, so we put the first piece in here and we're gonna try another piece here. We're just gonna repeat everything. Again, nothing fancy, just spread it around as though you're spreading, as I said before, jam on toast. Now, do these just, break apart ever when they're in the oven? Uh, can you use a toothpick to hold them together? You or? can, but there's no reason to. If you pack it really, really tight, very good question, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pack this tight, if you can. If you can't, you can use a toothpick. I, usually, there's no need to do that. If you put it seam side down as it cooks, it's not really gonna open up on you. In Italian, they cook brujol, which is a, a beefy meat. The same way, we're just doing this to fish. And brujol, they have a tendency to string it, I've never tried not stringing it, but I gotta give that a try now that I see you're doing it with fish. So we're gonna continue. By the way, this fish was donated by a local fish store. And it's called, aptly so, the fish store right here in Bayport on Snedek Avenue and Montauk Highway. They've been a staple here with regard to fish for as long as I can remember. 
and I they've, can remember a long time. They've been very good to the Bayport Fire Department. They've donated all the fish from last season. They've done, um, anytime we've needed anything for a function, the Bayport Fish Market has always done it. So Seth is the owner, he's a great guy. Thank you again for donating the fish for this episode. Matter of fact, you can get lunch there, <laughs> take out, dinner, take out. Do I look like I'm looking for a plug here? He also has a little restaurant in the back, which is a beautiful place to sit down. Very cozy, excellent food. All right, we're doing this to all four, as you see. Oh, I'm, sure, I'm sorry, all five. And let's just put this in here. This looks pretty good. Yep, yep, it's very simple. Actually, my parents never really made this. When I was a kid, I didn't know from food. Everything that they made, I didn't realize how healthy it was for us. We had spinach, we had Eskimo soup. We had a number of dishes that were so simple. Rice and lentils, there's so much you can do, and it's really very, very economical. This here is going over the top just a bit to give you an idea of how you can make a simple filet of sole stuff and just add certain condiments that you have and make a wonderful meal out of it. Okay, I'm just going to pour up very, again, it seems like we're using a lot of oil. Keep in mind, the amount of fish you're gonna eat is gonna have a minuscule amount. A lot of it's gonna remain in the dish or in the baking dish. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit on, on as we drizzle it over the top. This is really just to sort of give us a little base so that when we start putting in all of our seasoning, it has a place to stick on too. I'm going to put just a little, I'm just gonna shake a little bit out here, just a little bit of paprika, put a little bit of color. We always wanna make it look good. I worked for a uh, gentleman many, many years ago. His name was Ben, may he rest, and uh, in a luncheonette when I was a kid. And uh, he told me, you know, Anthony, it's got to look good to your eye. If it looks good to your eye, it's going to be delicious in your, in your, in your belly. Stomach. So, uh, and I very much uh, subscribe to that. And uh, I've noticed that that seems to be the case for just about anything when they put it on the table. I mean, some people like large portions. Some people like small portions. Some people like to pay a lot for small portions. Some people like to pay a lot for little portions. Go figure. This is basic. The most expensive part of this particular recipe is your fish. And if you shop around, uh, you can get, uh, when it's on sale, you can usually get a good price for it. We'll and you put right red pepper, you put paprika? I put a little paprika, I put some salt, salt, some pepper. You can season that again to taste. Once again, all the, um, recip the recipe is gonna be on our website. Flyhousekitchenshow.com. Um, and uh, you, as far as the quantities go, uh, again, they're there, but you can just use love. Uh, I'm gonna pour now a little lemon juice over the top. All right. Actually, I like a lot of lemon juice, so although I say a little. You don't wanna wash uh, it off, right? Am I looking? I'm like, I don't know. Oh, did I put too much? Ah, oh, I put too much. No, don't worry about it. You can never put too much lemon juice. As a matter of fact, that's the broth that it's gonna cook in. And that's what you're gonna wind up. Yeah, All one right. more? Oh, more? Okay. No problem. So, so far, we just have that. I'm gonna take a little bit of some parsley. Again, fresh parsley, dried parsley, doesn't really matter. If it's dried parsley, you always want to put it in at the beginning of your cooking. We're going to put it in, even though this is fresh, I happen to have fresh parsley. Don't go out and crazy and buy yourself fresh parsley. No need to. That, something else we got to put on. Hmm, lemons. Lemon always looks good. We got lemon Just garnish. lemon juice. We put lemon juice. Now we're going to put some lemon just for garnish here. Okay. And this is pretty well all ready to go now. We need a cover for this. Do we have a cover, son? Uh, I know we have a cover in our oven. Okay. The miracle of cooking. We have one ready to go. Uh, but before we do that, and before we put this in the oven, we're gonna make a sauteed spinach. Nothing looks better and tastes better than this stuffed flounder filet over a bed of Now, sauteed, sauteed spinach, spinach is something that we make in the firehouse a lot. I like to put garlic in with my sauteed spinach, and I do it over oil. Well, funny you should say that, I have garlic. All right, so we're going to make that only because through the miracles of modern television, we have our flounder in the oven. So before I put this in and take that out, I want to have our spinach ready to go. So have you gonna, done this before, Dad? Never, on, on never. TV, because you're very you're never, natural. You're never. just doing unbelievable. Now I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil. Again, there goes some more oil, but olive oil is good for you. It's a good fat, as my mom would say. A little bit of everything makes it more delicious and more of a little bit everything is even better. So, did you understand what I just said? Because I did. 
Now you, right. do, you do garlic first? I do my garlic first. I like to brown my garlic. A lot of people will take... I this, burn my garlic. Well, I'll that's say. the whole idea. You, yeah. don't, you really don't want to burn it. You want to make sure that you keep your eye on it. And we want to saute that. And I like it. Let's get that here a little higher. Okay. I don't like to take my garlic out. Some people infuse. Get that word? They infuse the flavor of garlic and then take the garlic out. What's that all about? As far as I'm concerned, is that from overcooking it? Is you that... should, well, no, they just think you don't need that. You just want a gentle flavor, and that's fine. There are some times where you don't want that robust flavor. Oh, I uh, think where you just the want... more the garlic, the better. But right? as far as I'm concerned, absolutely. You just you don't want the garlic to burn. You just want it to, the, the garlic to saute its flavor into the oil. All right, we're going to add our spinach right now. Okay. This may look like a lot of spinach, but it is going to... Turn into nothing. Actually, become very, almost, it becomes very, very limp. Actually, keep it in here, it sort of just wilts, wilts it out. It shrinks it, but to it nothing. It shrinks to absolutely to nothing. Now, we're just going to continue to keep this on the high heat. Okay. And let's just... This is going to take a few minutes. Yeah, that's going to take a few minutes. Now, it's funny, but growing up, I don't remember my parents ever... As I said this before and over and over again, everything they made just mis mysteriously appeared on the table. We didn't know how fortunate we were, my sister and I, to have that abundance of food, food which we had to be forced to eat. It's only now that I got older I realized how delicious and how fortunate we were that we did eat it. We weren't force-fed, but we were told it was good for us. And you hear that all the time, eat, it's good for you. Now, how can it be good for me if I don't like it? Unfortunately, it's sort of a... Um, problem and issue with children, but later on it seems that they all seem to progress where they like it all of a sudden. My grandson's uh, also, his son, as a matter of fact, was a very picky eater, and today he'll eat sushi, so go figure. So and this locks. is he loves and locks. locks. So, uh, he absolutely loves locks. Um, my three-year-old now loves chocolate chip pancakes and waffles, so he's got a very wide variety of tastes. Yep. My, uh, but my daughter, Samantha, she eats everything. Samantha eats everything. Now you can see how this is wilting down. You can kick this up a notch. I'm just gonna add a few pinches of salt. Who's looking? You can kick this up a notch a little bit if you want. Did I just say kick it up a notch? If you want to do so by putting some red flake pepper. Uh, mm -hmm. but, but then you'll always get those individuals who say, ah, it's a little mm -hmm. hot for my palate. So we try to keep it where if you want to make it a little hotter, you can just by adding it yourself. Cool, this is just about wilting down. Did you have any uh, aspirations about being a fireman yourself? Uh, I had a lot of aspirations about a lot of things. Uh, a fireman, police officer. I would have loved to have been a police officer, but as you can see, I'm not tall in stature. Police officer and more than a fireman? To be, well, when I came out to Nassau County, I wanted to be a police officer, and you had to be 5'8", and I was just under the 5'8". Uh, and I didn't think about hanging from my feet for a few days and all of the tricks they say you could have done. Today, fortunately, anyone and everyone can become whatever they choose to be uh, as long as you have the drive, the desire, and you pass the test. Um, but yes, a, got that. A, fireman, a fireman is something I uh, considered as well, too, but uh, wasn't about to make it. But I did okay in the real world, uh, as they say, because uh, my son-in-law talks about being a fireman. Uh, to this day, it's something that he will always say he's ready to go back at a moment's notice. Goodness, spinach is ready. I'm gonna ask my son-in-law, since we do not have any pot holders, to gingerly take out what okay. we have put in so we could put this in. All right. So, so wanna, oh, we do have pot holders. holders. Cool, cool, cool. This is the firehouse. We have oh, everything in the pot. In the I'm fire. sorry, I didn't realize that. We're gonna take out, as we put this one in and cover this one, you can take that one out, son. Okay. Something that we made, put it right here, previously, and you can take that cover plate on here. All right, put that one in. Right. Oops. We're making two big batches because yep. when we eat in the firehouse, we're always feeding 15, 20 guys. Push that in. So we got one batch in, one batch out. So should I just start eating it right now? Well, I'm just going to put a little oil on top of this. We're now going to plate. We're going to... Take a little bit of spinach. This is about a pound of spinach in here. Uh, I love spinach. Uh, anything that was good enough for Popeye. Who's Popeye? 
Most children don't know who Popeye is. No, they don't. So, we've got this out. We're going to now take very gingerly. OK. All right. Now Just going to garnish with a little. This is a little something you can make if you decide to. It's not necessary. I just like a little bit of color. What so, is that? This is a pesto. Just a red pesto, which is a uh, sun-dried tomato. Now, you make an amazing pesto sauce. Well, it's relatively simple. It's uh, And all your pesto, you grow your own, right? Don't you grow yep, your own pesto? Yep, 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 yep. Um, just, just a little color, sort of the green, the fish, and the red. This is a uh, sun-dried tomato in olive oil. Olive oil again, with a little bit of parsley and just a pinch of salt and red pepper. And pretty much this is your plate. Beautiful. Stuffed flounder, filet, over sauteed spinach. Can I have a taste? Certainly. All right. Now, do I take a little pesto, put it on the fork, too? Absolutely. All right. However, so however, you, however pesto you want. On the fork. Of course, he's going to say it's right. good. He wouldn't say anything other than that. Oh, it's, it's fish. My fish is good for you. I don't know what it's all about. Let's see. All right. This is a fish that I would eat. So he says. This would go over in any firehouse. Wow. That's really good. I, like, I love the pesto. Oh my gosh. It really gives you, yeah, grab a scrap of fork full. That's actually perfect. Mm -mm -mm. You gotta make this for Christmas Eve. Actually, we did. Mm. Mm. I went to we didn't make this for Christmas Eve. The problem with Christmas Eve is we have so much food, thank you God, is that by the time we get to that, everybody's so mm. full, so we wind up having it the next day that you don't um, appreciate it, it seems, as much as if you were to eat it on yeah. the holiday. All yeah. right, uh, we're gonna clean up, and then we're gonna come back, and I'm gonna make an unbelievable fish meal from you, and you're gonna be taken back by this Sounds dish, good to me. dish that I'm gonna make. Sounds good to me, but I'm All just gonna right. eat this just in I'll case one more piece I'm not crazy about you. Very good. Hi, I'm Firefighter Ray, and today's fire fact are the irons. The irons are what the inside team carries into a fire. The inside team goes and does search and rescue. They have to find the fire. Now, an ax is pretty self-explanatory. That's one of our main things, demolition. We knock things in with the ax. The second tool is the halligan. This is like the super tool. Every fireman loves this tool. This tool can open any door. It's like a skeleton key. It's like a super skeleton key. All right, and what we do with the al halligan is we take the, the fork end of it and we wedge it into the door jam. My partner will hit with the ax on the other side and get it in there nice and deep. Now, sometimes I can't get in. I can't get a purchase. So that's what this spike is for. I'll step back and I'll hit the spike into the door and then I'll pry it back, creating a little bit of a space so my fork will foot fit in. So now I got the fork in the door. I got my can man hitting the end of the halogen. It gets in nice and deep. And then I pry it, I pry it. Now I make sure the door doesn't fly right open. So sometimes I'll take a hose spanner, I'll put it around the doorknob, or I'll even might have a fireman just standing here with his shoulder so the door doesn't fly open. If that door flies open, that could add a lot of oxygen to the fire and that could bring the fire out to us or it could just make that fire stronger inside. So you want to keep the integrity of the door. So these are our super tools. This is our halogen and this is our ax, okay? These are our fireman's best friend. I'm Firefighter Ray. And this was my fire fact for today. Okay, we're all cleaned up. That was the most delicious flounder I've ever had, okay? I think now I'm gonna become more of a fish eater. But since you shared one of your fish recipes with me, I'm gonna make one of my fish recipes I always used to make in my firehouse when I was a New York City fireman. Uh, it's called Blue Glove Tuna. And the reason why we call it Blue Glove Tuna is I always make it with EMS gloves. Now you may say, oh, gross, you make it with EMS gloves. We washed our gloves, we got any, any, anything on them, it's just like using any kind of regular cooking gloves. But uh, when the guys would come into the kitchen in the firehouse and they see me mixing up the tuna with my blue gloves, it always caught a little bit of, uh, little bit of uh, busting my chops about my tuna. All right, so we have eight cans of tuna fish right here, albacore white tuna, we got it all together. And uh, we're just gonna use my ingredients, okay? I like a nice, hearty tuna, all right? So I like my onions, I got one full cut up onion, it's minced up, I'm gonna mix that in, and I have almost a whole stalk of celery, okay? Wow, to fill it right up. One of my favorite ingredients, relish. Every tuna should have relish. It's something about how the salt, the salt and the mayo get together, and it's just, pickles on anything is, is pretty much good. All right, except peanut butter, peanut butter and pickles. 
All right, something good? All right, and then three tablespoons of lemon juice. We're gonna put those right in. Oh, that's gonna really give it. Lemon and fish, all right, it kills the taste of fish. All right, and now we're gonna keep adding mayo. Is that low fat? It's actually, it is low fat mayo. Good, I put a little bit of extra vinegar in it, it makes it a little lighter. Good, and then how it gets its name? Blue glove tuna. You gotta get in there and you gotta yeah, mix it around. Do it. So I'm gonna mix it around right in there. Good. Now what makes this blue glove tuna so good and what, why, why it's so separate from just regular tuna is how much we grind it up. If you get tuna in a deli, you'll see if it's got a lot of chunks in it, yeah, they didn't mush it up with their hands. You want this tuna mushed up with your hands and you know, what makes it a little bit cleaner mm -hmm. is we do it with our nice blue gloves. All right. Okay. Now tuna fish has high in protein. This, you know, this has got onions, it's got pickles. Very, very healthy for you. The only thing that's bad for us is the, is the mayo. But what's mayo made out of? Egg yolks. So, you know, how bad is it? It's got a lot of cholesterol. Now, when I used to make this in the firehouse, 15 guys. Good, and now right when I think it's just about done, I add one more ingredient, okay? Ritz crackers, all right? I like one sleeve of Ritz crackers per eight cans of tuna. All right, so I'm putting my Ritz crackers in. I'm gonna mash them all up. Yeah, that feels like it's enough. Good. I'm just gonna mix it right in. A little more mayo. We need more mayo. Mm. Yes, sir. Important. More yes, mayo, sir. the better. Yeah, one more. One more big sure. one. That's it. Any more? I think my tuna is ready when it's almost as white as the mayo itself. There mm, we mm, go. Mm. And we mush. Run it through the hands. It's actually a pretty good feeling you get here mushing up this tuna. That really looks good, I gotta tell you. All right. Are you ready to plate it, Dad? Let's plate it. All right, let's grab. You can grab the plates right from behind me. How are you gonna plate this? You gonna make a sandwich? We're gonna make it? a sandwich. Yeah, listen. So, gonna, we got two plates. We got two plates. We're gonna make it on regular white bread. Oh, it's yummy. The fire department. We're not trying yummy. to win culinary awards. Awesome. Oh, you know, I'm gonna make mine. Whoa, doesn't that look nice just and simple? Awesome, plating, yes. <laughs> awesome, can we cut this? Notice my garnish? Mm. No, we don't cut off sandwiches, the fire department. Mm. We pick it up and we take a bite. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. This is my blue glove tuna. And go for Here it, big go. one. Mm. Mm. No, nope. that's too much. Everybody always said, mm, that's really, really, really good, but this really is good. And you've heard that too before. This is really good. Mm. Excellent job. Mm -mm -mm. Wipe my mm -mm. face a little bit. Mm. Dad? I I vinegar gives it just a little kick. You like that, right? And the lemon, absolutely delicious. Dad, I want to thank you for coming mm. on Firehouse mm. Kitchen. All right. My pleasure, if I can eat like this. Are you still going to prep for us? Absolutely. All right, excellent. I'll see you guys next time on Firehouse Kitchen. All right. Good, I'm going to finish my sandwich. Excellent. Mm. Really, really good. Mm.